And here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday, the 27th of February, 2020. It's the birthday of the Kiowa novelist and poet N. Scott Momaday, born in Lawton, Oklahoma, 1934. He was going to study law, but then he met William Faulkner at the University of Virginia, decided to study literature instead. He started writing, and he was working on a project about the sacred Sundance doll of the Kiowa tribe. He was trying to write a book of poems, but then he turned the poems into fiction, and that became his first novel, House Made of Dawn, which came out in 1968 and won the Pulitzer Prize. It's the birthday of John Steinbeck, born in Salinas, California, 1902, who in the late 30s was sent by newspaper to report on the migrant farmers in the Central Valley of California. He got an old bakery truck and drove around, found people starving, thousands of people with typhus and the flu crowded into worker camps, wrote it all down and went home to write a novel. And in less than six months, He had a 200,000-word manuscript. He finished it October 26, 1938, wrote in his journal, Finished this day, and I hope to God it's good. He had written it by longhand. His wife, Carol, typed up the manuscript, and she suggested a title, The Grapes of Wrath. It was published 1939, sold half a million copies in its first year. And it was on this day in 1812 that Lord Byron made his first speech in the House of Lords. 1812, the economy of Great Britain was transformed by the Industrial Revolution, skilled workers replaced by machines. And some of these workers protested by destroying machines, the Luddites. And the British government proposed the Frame Breaking Act, which said that anyone guilty of breaking a machine would either be sentenced to death or sent to Australia. Byron argued against the Frame Breaking Act, which passed nonetheless. And today is the birthday of the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, born Portland, Maine, 1807. Went to Bowdoin College, became a scholar of literature and modern languages. Went off to Europe to study. His wife went with him. She had a miscarriage, died in the Netherlands. Longfellow fell in love with a young woman named Fanny Appleton, She rejected his proposal in despair. He threw himself into his work, and he became a popular American poet. Fanny Appleton married him in 1843, changed her mind. They were very happy. They had six children together. On his 40th birthday, he finished his epic romance, Evangeline, which was very popular, and so was his long poem, The Song of Hiawatha, which came out in 1855. But one day, six years later, his wife, Fanny, was using sealing wax, and her dress caught on fire. Longfellow rushed in from the next room, tried to put the fire out by throwing his arms around her, but she died the next day. This is the poem that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote in memory of his wife, The Cross of Snow. In the long, sleepless watches of the night, a gentle face, the face of one long dead, looks at me from the wall, where round its head the night lamp casts a halo of pale light. Here in this room she died, and soul more white never through martyrdom of fire was led to its repose nor can in books be read the legend of a life more benedite. There is a mountain in the distant west that sun-defying in its deep ravines displays a cross of snow upon its side. Such is the cross I wear upon my breast these eighteen years through all the changing scenes and seasons changeless since the day she died. The Cross of Snow by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. That's the Writer's Almanac for Thursday, February the 27th. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.